Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. I know it's been a long time since I've done an update on the P47 project from Horizon Hobby, but it's been for good reason. I've been working on many, many, many iterations of the intercooler doors, which have been quite tricky to finalize, but they are final. This is the final version. I've done some weight reduction, I've done some resizing, I've done some functionality issues as well. Um, as you can see, it's working quite smoothly and I'm going to go over some of the tips and tricks about assembling it and things to look for along the way. So let's get into that real quick. So here we have the basic pieces of the intercooler door mechanism and you can see that I've designed it so that everything keys together and it should be pretty straightforward to print. This prints directly on the, the print bed like this. I definitely recommend using supports. Some of this printing on the back is kind of rough as a result of that, just because of how thin it is. Again, I'm trying to reduce as much weight as possible here. These are mostly for facilitating printing on your printer, but uh, they, if they break off or you want to break them off after assembly, you're welcome to do so. So essentially you have the two sides that glue onto the main piece. And obviously the carrier fits into the groove. I don't have another pin in this carrier, but um, again, pretty straightforward. So to, to really see how this works, you know, we're, we're looking straight in and I've widened the holes a bit. And I went through several iterations to make sure that that was all right, as well as when this goes down, that this, the carrier isn't bumping into the recess that's into this plate. So again, fitting that, making sure that the, the grooves were the right size as well. And then moving on to the, what it actually looks like. So this is a completed one that I have so far. <clears throat> And I think uh, you'll see right away that it's really straightforward. This is just the piece of balsa straight off of the airplane that I cut out, covered it in my aluminum foil tape and did some polishing work. You can see that the polish is really quite good for contrast here. So it is quite legible on the reflection. Uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to do this uh, particular detail just because with all of this mirror reflection the airplane is going to look rather dull and you want some texture to break that up. And uh, so here's the fully working mechanism and I'll show you from the side what I did. So that's how you get the pivot out right at the very end. So this end just sort of dips down, goes below where the surface of the fuselage is and slides back in. And then it's fully open and extended. And the also, the neat part is there's plenty of opening for, for cooling air. It's for your batteries or whatever. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a nice detail functionally as well as aesthetics. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, and I, I should also note that when you install it in the, in the fuselage, you're not gonna wanna like have the servo right here because this last little bit is gonna be hard to, uh, hard to move. Just, just because the angle on your servo horn right here, um, it's, it's just, <laughs> you're pulling back and, and you're, it's going to take more force. So what I re am recommending, and this is exactly what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do diagonally across the fuselage like this. So that's way easier on the servo. I'm using next to no force. So another couple of, of key pointers is that, you know, you're, I, before I assembled this, I put on the aluminum foil and it was a bit rough to move this at first, which I, I expected. So that's why I used a pencil and some sandpaper and you just scratch off some of this onto the sandpaper and 
put a little down in there. And it helps smooth things out. And I did that all over the hole. That's why it looks kind of messy. So uh, that's, that's pretty much it. That's how it works. That's how it goes together. So as you can imagine, I am struggling to try to keep momentum on this project because of all these little hiccups that come along the way. And that's part of the, the beauty of trying to do a model like this is that you don't know what you're gonna encounter because there are things that the manufacturer does that uh, you like and you want to enhance and there are things that they don't do like this that you have to sort of completely construct and and there are there's some installation issues as well that you have to reposition some of the push rods for the other control services so again you can do these things but just be aware <laughs> that sometimes it'll take more time than you anticipate. So I apologize for the lack of updates, but I have been working behind the scenes. I have been recovering from a cold, but you know, all the, all the while I'm, I'm enjoying building in my workshop. So I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to check in on the progress of the, of the project. And I hope to have more updates for you soon now that I can finally move forward past this little stumbling block. I'm Joshua Orchard. Thanks for stopping by the workshop today. Oh, <laughs>